Well, it looks as if it has stopped. People have stopped coming in. So let's get started. It's just about one o'clock. So let's make sure you're in the right spot. You should be here if you are in grades five, eight, or high school. Um, this is for the Science and Technology MCAS Alt. I am um, Deborah Hand. I'm here with Kevin Froten. He's our contractor from Cognia, and also with um, the teacher consultants that are going to be answering questions when we're complete, when we have finished. And um, we also have two interpreters joining us this morning, this afternoon, <laughs> just a little late. All right, let's get started. So just wanna make sure that you're all familiar with the um, language. It's for grades um, five and eight, we have next gen disciplines. And for high school, we have next gen and legacy. Next generation just refers to the 2016 science and tech engineering standards. Legacy refers to the 2001, 2006 science and tech engineering standards. And legacy is only in the high school discipline. So grades five and eight, you have a choice of life science, physical science, earth and space science, and tech engineering. The MCAS all covers multiple disciplines in five and eight. In high school, you only are covering one discipline. So for next gen, it's either biology, introductory physics, or legacy, chemistry, and tech eng. Just highlight that if so that you remember five and eight, you have multiple disciplines, high school, one discipline. And we're gonna do a quick survey just to see who's with us today. So if you just please take a moment and answer the questions that pop up. Just wanna know which grade levels you're assessing for, the, for your students for the STE. So we have grades five, eight, and high school. So high school can be grades nine or 10. Thank you for those that came back this afternoon. I know that's very difficult when you're trying to do both <clears throat> work, teach, and then attend this. So I appreciate you coming back. Kevin, I can't see if anything is happening, so you'll have to share that when it's completed. Thank you. It's pretty evenly spread out. We have a, um, we can share this with you in a minute as soon as it closes. So if you've just joined, just asking you to um, select the grade level that you're assessing for the science, this would be very helpful for us as we go forward. So it's all set, Deb. Can you see the percentages? Okay. There you are. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So grade five, we have about 45%. Grade eight, about 38%. Oh, and the same for high school, 38%. Perfect. A, a pretty even split. All right, so let's get started. Remember that the um, if you want more information on any of this, those little blue boxes in the right-hand corner of the PowerPoint have the educator manual page. Also, we will put again that MCAS Alt material site for you to go to because that has a science sample for you to look at if you are interested. Okay. So one of the things that are new about the next gen science is that there are eight science practices. These practices help promote engagement, help the students do that hands-on um, inquiry, um, engineering and design, which is new to this, to this um, STE. And these specific science practices have numbers next to them, but they're not in any specific order. So just to give you a little bit of an idea, we're gonna go through each of these practices and then we'll talk about why they're important. So there's asking questions and defining problems, planning and carrying out investigations, and that's to gather information, perform experiments and investigations, and answer scientific questions. Then we have using mathematical and computational thinking, and that's to answer those scientific questions. And that sounds highfalutin, but it's pretty simple. Then we're gonna ask the students to analyze and interpret the data. 
and that's to recognize patterns and to organize data, and which our students have been doing for years, you know, with the weather and that type of thing where they have to put the icon on how many days are sunny and how many days are cloudy. So that is the first four. Here's the next four. So developing and using models. This is a way to think about and make sense of those investigations, to make predictions, to have something tangible, use displays and illustrations. Constructing explanations and designing solutions. This is to explain the phenomena and to use that evidence to support those explanations. Again, sounds harder than it really is. And we'll show you some examples of all of these. Engaging in arguments from evidence to support a claim or critique an, a competing argument. And finally, the last one is obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information to evaluate and to present that information um, from multiple sources. And there's so many ways that we can do that. So let's take a look at the um, uh, resource guide. So here's our STE resource guide, and it's broken down into grade spans, pre-K to two, three to five, six to eight, and then high school. Topics, which are in each discipline, these are called core ideas. That's one of those highlightable moments. Core ideas are going to be very important to the requirement. So just remember, we're calling them core ideas, but they are the topic, okay? The content, so all of the content is gonna be embedded under each of these various science practices. And I think I said at the beginning, you can find the resource guides and all this material available at our material site. We have two different resource guides. One is for legacy. So that remember that's only high school and that will have just um, chemistry and tech engine there. And then we have the full pre-K to high school for the next gen in all of the disciplines. So here's an excerpt from the uh, from life science. This is from the resource guide. So let's take a look at that. The first thing we're going to look at is there's three columns here. Investigations and questioning, mathematics and data, evidence and reasoning. Under each of those columns, you will see that there's practices. Each of the practices are divided under those columns. And you'll see that throughout the entire next gen resource guide, okay? And here's a helpful hint because one of the requirements is that you're gonna have three different practices. If you take a practice, one practice from each column, you will have three different practices, just a tip. Next, we have the core idea. So the core idea in this particular case, it's life science, and there's multiple core ideas to choose from, but this one is from molecules to organisms, right? And then we have these practices. So as you can see, the practice numbers are bolded with the name of the practice next to it. We have several of those throughout. Then we have the entry points. Now these entry points are embedded under each of these practices. And you can see there's a plethora of entry points under each of these practices, okay? But you only need to choose one entry point per practice, All right? So let's keep going. This was a three to five. In science, it's very different than when you had to do um, a skill survey for each of your math domains and for each of your ELA strands. In science, you only need to complete one skill survey for all disciplines. So if you are in grades five and eight and you're doing three like life science, um, earth and space and um, physical science, then you only still need to do one skill survey. For high school, you're still going to do one skill survey, just once. What you're looking for is you're going to check the box and I'm gonna show you a copy of what this looks like. And then when Kevin goes, he'll show you how to actually get to it, fill it out. But each of the practices will have boxes in them. 
The boxes are just about the practice. There's no science content in it. You're going to check off that box for the practice that the student can do independently, at least some of the time. If you have to support them some of the time, that's fine. But you're going to start with the highest grade span. So if you're grade eight, you will start at the six to eight level. And then you'll look at each of those skills in the skill survey and check off the ones that your student can do. And it's going to vary depending on the practice, right? So maybe asking questions is very difficult and you might have very few checked, but when you get to data analysis, they can do graphing, they can do tallies. Um, so you might have more marked off. Entry points, as I just said, can be from different grade scan spans. So let's take a look at what that skill survey looks like. So here's one for uh, practice three, science practice three, analyzing and interpreting data. So the most complex, so if you're at high school level, that's where you're going to start. However, maybe there's nothing there your student can do. So you go to six to eight, or perhaps you have to go to three to five. And maybe in some cases, you go all the way back to pre-K to two. But you want to look at what they are able to do because that's where you want to start from, okay? We have given you some examples. So under grade six to eight, it says use data and or observations. And then there's an example there. For example, descriptions or drawings of observations over time or measurements that may show a pattern. So just some ideas of what that specific skill would look like. And sometimes for your students, you may actually have to start teaching some of the practices before you ever get to the science content, okay? So Kevin's gonna go over this in real life. And then now let's look at the step-by-step -step requirements. So the very first thing you're gonna do is that skill survey and you're only gonna do it how many times? One time, one time, but you're gonna do all eight practices. So this is for grades five and eight. We talked about those four disciplines as a grade five and eight. You only have to choose three of those four disciplines. Each discipline is going to have, you're going to select one core idea. So if I pick earth and space, life science and physical science, one core idea for each of those. Then this is a really helpful tip is that you wanna review the entry points in the core idea that you chose because you wanna create this cohesive unit. You don't just wanna do the bare minimum requirements, right? You want them to understand the science concept that you're teaching. So whether it be a water cycle or, um, the, the sun and how the shadows are created, you wanna look at light, any of those things you wanna do, you wanna make this a cohesive unit. You wanna make it so the students are engaged and they understand the science concepts. Then you're gonna select your three entry points or access skill for each of those core ideas. So remember, you have, you have chosen three disciplines out of those four. Each discipline has a core idea. Each core idea has three entry points or access skills. And each of those entry points are going to reflect a different science practice, okay? Remember my tip of taking one from each column? That would definitely give you three different science practices. Next, you're going to complete a summary sheet, which isn't really that hard to complete, especially when you use forms and graphs. You're gonna put the student's name, the date of the activity, your core idea, and many of these things are generated automatically. So once you pick your entry point it will or access skill, that will pop right in there and populate. Then also the number of the practice will populate when you choose that entry point. What you do have to do is summarize the accuracy and independence for each of those pieces of evidence and then a description of that activity. And that's a really helpful piece to know how you've set it up. Maybe you've done an investigation, but you're not giving us that work. So it's good to know that what your investigation was that led to the analyzing of the data, okay? And finally, you're gonna submit three pieces of evidence. So those three pieces of evidence that represent those three different practices 
will have that summary sheet attached. Think of that summary sheet as that work description label that we were using when you came on uh, Tuesday, and we also did it if you came to the ELA writing. That summary sheet is just summarizing what you are putting with that evidence so we know what you did. Okay, don't forget to include examples of self-evaluation and the same primary evidence um, requirements stand here. So work samples, photos, <clears throat> excuse me, our videos are maybe submitted, but we need to see that final product and it must align with the entry point that you chose. Okay, but we have to see what you did. That is what we need to do. And here's I'm gonna go through a quick example. This is a grade five. And you can see this is the strand cover sheet. It's very small. The discipline is technology engineering. The core idea that was chosen is engineering design. And then you'll see below where it has the practice numbers. There's three different numbers there. And it says evidence attached, but you're always gonna attach evidence. So that should always be a yes. And then Kevin talked about today, if you were at writing about my descriptions, if you put the description on your, on the summary sheet, it'll come out here and it's helpful for you to know what you, what you're submitting. And then of course we have the three dates and whether or not you have self-evaluation. So we're going to go through the next three samples that, uh, that would go with Roy Kent. So the first one is science practice six. And because it's engineering design, it's design solutions. It's a little hard to see the evidence, but it is a windmill that they've done. The entry point is draw and, ex and or explain a design solution. As you can see on the summary sheet, the teacher told us that the student labeled the parts of a windmill using a photograph of his completed project and then printed words to match the parts. Also see that self-evaluation is right there, that the student chose the material to be used in this activity. Perfect, right? What better way to involve your student than to have them help you uh, help choose that material? Because in this case, he's creating a windmill. The, the teacher said it was 100% accurate and 80% independent. It would have been helpful and again, not required, but it would have been helpful on the actual work if you could have seen what he needed help with. Was it labeling? Was it the order? Um, just a prompt might have been helpful there, but it, it also would have helped the teacher to know uh, their challenges and how to help them on the next uh, investigation. So this is the first piece of evidence. And we see on there that it's uh, science practice six. So let's see the second piece of evidence. This is science practice three, analyzing data. So the summary sheet says it's an entry point. They're gonna draw conclusion, conclusions based on evidence. And that's from an investigation. Remember I said, sometimes you'll do an investigation, but you won't submit it. And the validity of the design solution. So, the brief description talks about after planning and building a model windmill, the student completed a reflection worksheet that included the data from testing his windmill. He recorded changes that he made from the original design and the teacher scribed his response. So when we look at what the student completed, you can, looks like he said, was your windmill able to lift any washers? Yes. If yes, how many washers was your windmill able to lift? Just one. And then in your opinion, what was the hardest part of this engineering project? And he said, making the blades. And then at the bottom, this you can see that's where the teacher scribed what changes had to be made along the way. So they added the cup, the sticks, and folded the blades, all right? So we get a good picture of what the student had to do in order to create this. And then we have a reflection of his work and how he had to change it. So the third piece of evidence, now this is the, the last piece of evidence that you need to submit, okay? We, we looked at the strand cover sheet, evidence one, evidence two, and now we're on evidence three. And this is science practice seven. This is an argument. 
This is an entry point that says use scientific evidence to support a claim about the solution that best fits the needs of the problem. So, so the student made a claim about whether wind power can be used to lift objects by answering a question and providing evidence from the windmill. So can the windmill be used to lift objects up and down? His claim is yes. And the evidence says, how do you know this is true? And he said, the blade moves. Well, the teacher didn't, must have had a little bit more criteria that they wanted because they only gave him 50% accuracy on that. So that's up to the teacher to determine that. And um, that's fine. It's 100% independent. But I don't think that this is the only thing that they did for this unit. They didn't just do these three pieces. They obviously did an investigation about wind power. They did an investigation uh, about how to create an engineering design and, and talked about how to make it and then how changes need to be made. So even though you're only submitting these three pieces of evidence for us, I'm hopeful that you're going to create a cohesive unit that makes sense to your students and they understand the concept that you're trying to get across to them. So that's the end of that whole strand for engineering design for grades five and eight. Now we're gonna show you what the summary sheet, we're gonna break that down from Roy and show you all the parts of it. And like I said, if you use forms and graphs online, many of this, many of these things will come through. So first of all, you're gonna have the student's name, the grade, and you have to choose a core idea. And that core idea has to stay the same throughout that one strand, right? That one discipline. Next, we have the, um, entry point or access skill. So as soon as you choose an entry point, that'll be checked off for you, including the page number and the grade span. Then you put the date in, the discipline, which in this case is tech engineering, and then the science practice number will come in when you choose that entry point. Then we have a place for your description of the activity. And the summary of the activity, we want to make sure that we have that there because we weren't with you. So you need to make sure that it's on both the evidence and the summary sheet is very helpful to make sure we have we are matching things up correctly at scoring. And then you'll see a place for self-evaluation. You can write it in, you can attach it. Same self-evaluation rules um, apply here as they did in all the other uh, subject areas that we talked about. So here are some different pieces, some different science practices, just to give you some ideas as to what it would look like for grades five or eight. So in this, this one, the evidence is a student using an AAC device. They are using an entry point, recall and present information from observations, text or media source about how animals grow and change over time. So after watching media about the life cycle of a frog and butterfly, the teacher presented a worksheet with pictures of the life cycle and temporal words for sentence starters. Then the student pasted the word describing each step of the life cycle next to the corresponding temporal words. Finally, the student recalled and presented information from the media about how animals grow and change by using their AAC device describing the frog life cycle. So you can see the evidence up at the very top, right under where it says frog life cycle. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the student had choices below and they created first egg, next tadpole, next tadpole with legs, after frogling and last adult frog. And on the right-hand side, the teacher very nicely put the data in there and they got five out of 10 independently. So they were 50% accurate, but this was science practice eight. So if the student could do this on their AAC device, think of all the different ways that your students could communicate what they have learned, whether they watched a video, um, you can use a PowerPoint. There's many ways in which your students will be able to uh, show what they have learned about these processes. So self-evaluation, you we talked about that earlier. It's the same, but in, in science, I think we have one more click for that one. And that's 
this is a, an example. They chose their activity. They chose that material. Remember that student said they chose the material. That's a good one to just write in there. Um, I fixed a mistake. I asked for help. I did a great job. Or I think I need more practice. Any of that is um, self-evaluation. So I think in science, you have a, a lot of choices between choosing your material, choosing who you want to work with, um, self-correcting, those kinds of things. So self-evaluations, oh, easy. Next one is evidence from practice five. So science practice five is a model, developing and using models. In this case, they're using this um, two-dimensional leaves, stems, flower, roots, and they made a model using um, the functions of a plant. So the student looked at the model, completed a worksheet after an investigation of living plants and included the functions for all the parts of the plants. Okay. Let's see the next one. This one is a practice one, asking questions and defining problems. So they work together on a topic after watching Bill Nye soaring into social motion force, science motion and forces video. They discussed the video and came up with questions. These are the questions the student came up with as part of the group. He chose them, he wrote them on here, and then the teacher wrote underneath it for legibility. So why do some things that are moving stay moving? Uh, what types of things are forces? And what does inertia mean? So those are some questions and those are scientific questions. So again, you're gonna have to do some pre-teaching about what scientific questions are versus what non-scientific questions are, okay? So that was practice one. So the strand cover sheet is just a great tool for you to go through, take a look at that and say, do I have three summary sheets? Yep. Do I have three different practices? Yep. How about three pieces of evidence? Yes, and there are two self-evaluations. So you need a minimum of two self-evaluations uh, for your strand. So that that's that for grades five and eight. So now on to high school. And this is high school next generation. So remember, you're going to complete one skill survey. You're going to do all those eight science practices, then you're going to decide, am I going to choose biology or introductory physics? Whichever one you choose, you're going to choose three different core ideas from that discipline. And then you're going to do the same thing that I just discussed with five and eight. You're going to choose three entry points or access skills. Those are going to represent three different science practices. You're going to explain all of that on your summary sheet. I think that's on the next page. So you're gonna complete that summary sheet, which is just like a work description label, okay? And you're gonna attach it right to the primary evidence with the work sample. So you're gonna have three work samples, three core ideas in one discipline, those, those, um, pieces of evidence are going to have three different science practices. So three pieces of primary evidence, three different science practices. And you can use that same tip. There's three different columns with the practices underneath them. If you choose one from each of those columns, you'll have three different science practices. For high school, you can spiral back if you need to. So if you're doing high school biology, you can spiral back to the life science in different grades. So here's biology. Uh, this is the uh, resource guide. And you can see the four core ideas. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to choose three of these because I have to do three core ideas. So I'm going to do ecosystems, heredity, and biological evolution, that's, that's gonna be my biology discipline, okay? So let's take a look at what that could look like. 
So this is ecosystems. The entry point is to construct an explanation to describe the role of producers, consumers, decomposers in an ecosystem based on a variety of sources. So what could that look like? So you can use an energy or trophic level pyramid and explain the roles of producers and consumers. And you see that right there, that piece of evidence, that is, that is an acceptable piece of evidence for this science practice six. See, it says organisms lower on the pyramid provide energy for organisms higher on the pyramid and decomposers break down all organisms. And obviously, if you created this, you would have the accuracy and independence on there. You would make sure that it was also on your summary sheet, right? Because you have to make sure it's on both and you would explain how that was to how that was done, the activity was completed. Let's take a look at another one. This is the second core idea. So that was just one practice in one core idea. You would have to do two more. So here's the second core idea, which is heredity. This is just one sample and one science practice. It's science practice three. The entry point says to analyze data from a Punnett square or pedigree to determine the inheritance pattern of a particular trait. So you can see the evidence down there. This is what it could look like. You could use that information about dominant and recessive forms of traits to create the Punnett square. And that predicts the genotypes and phenotypes of offsprings. And then this is the evidence that the height T is dominant for tall trait and the lowercase t is recessive for short trait. And if a short plant is crossed with a hybrid tall plant, what is the likelihood that the offspring will be short? So you can see the evidence, what the evidence could look like. Again, this is the second core idea with one practice. You would have to do two more different practices to have a total of three pieces of evidence in this core idea. So the last core idea that we chose was biological evolution. And this is science practice two. So the entry point says to select and or create the appropriate table or organizer to collect data from an investigation of a natural selection. So the students watch a video about natural selection. This is the activity, right? This is what it could look like and creates a table showing the results. So an investigation involving population of frogs living in a pond where the water gets darker each year over a period of four years, the student creates a table showing what happened to the number of light and dark colored frogs in the pond over time. So you can see the table that was created and the student filled it in. Again, you would put accuracy and independence on this. You would summarize it and put it on the, on the summary sheet along with the activity and all that other information. So those are just, those are the three different core ideas, okay? And one practice in each of those, just to give you an example, each of those would need two more science practices and attach that would be part of the evidence, okay? Now, what I do wanna show you is Say you have a student in high school that's not working at high school level. So I'm going to show you the same practice, practice three, at three different grade spans. So high school is out because it's too high. So at grade six to eight, they could analyze and interpret data to make sense of the process of natural selection in a plant or animal population. So that's an entry point at, at grade level six to eight. For grade levels three to five, they could draw conclusions based on evidence from an investigation about features of animals that enable them to survive in their habitat. So there's some examples of some of um, what it could be. That's grades three to five. Maybe your student's still not there. The grades pre-K to two display data using a simple graph or pictures to show living things in a local habitat just the schoolyard, their backyard. Um, so this is grade pre-K to two. This is the same practice three, but at different grade spans. So I just want you to have an idea of how this 
is broken down and the levels of complexity and how they change, okay? And we talked about using photographs as primary evidence. And we talked about that also at, on uh, Wednesday when we did our introduction. So here is one where the student developed a model to show or explain the water cycle. So they created this really cool diorama to depict it. You can see it's all labeled. Accuracy and independent is, independence is on it. But this would be too big, right? This is too big to put into a portfolio. You're not going to send the box. So they took a photograph of it, but it's so clearly labeled that we know exactly what happened. It would be attached to a work sample, a, a summary sheet. Okay, it's the end product. You can show the steps like the windmill, the person that did the windmill, they actually showed steps in creating that windmill. So you could also do it that way as long as we see the end product. Okay. And now Kevin is going to show you how this will work for your uh, student and the forms of graphs, I mean, for you. Thank you, Deb. So um, if you were with us early in the week, this is sort of a um, repeat of this slide, but just reminding you that if you have evidence um, that you've taken a bunch of pictures or have this series of uh, slides in a PowerPoint, you can submit that um, in the portfolio, either on a flash drive or a CD, DVD. You don't have to print them all out. Um, word of warning about the videos. We don't see a ton of them, but if you do, uh, video, um, just make sure that if you take it on your phone that you can open it on a different computer or a different device of some kind, um, just to make sure that you don't have either a corrupt file or um, some people put it in editing software and leave it in that version and we can't open it. So just trying it on something other than you created it um, is a nice fail safe if you don't trust yourself with um, using videos and moving them around um, as a file. Um, so now, give me just a second, I'm going to hop back into forms and graphs again and show you um, how we handle creating all these forms that Deb was just walking through. So give me one second and I'll open that screen up. Okay, so here we are back at our old friend forms and graphs. Um, if you, if this is your first time Coming to a training and you didn't attend that core concepts, we break this down um, step by step about how to create an account and get going. Um, so if you're coming to that next week, you're ahead of the game a little bit, but you will get caught up when you when you come to that core concepts to see how to do it. But for now, I'm just going to jump into a, a demo student sample I have going and show you how to, to do the science. So I'm going to sign in. And again, here's that my account, and it will be blank the first time you do it. But a nice thing, as I've mentioned all along, any info you put here will be automatically populated on the portfolio cover sheets as you go. So it's a, a nice little time saver. But to get to the science, I'll point this out. I saw this question pop up in the, the Q&A, and it, it happens um, a lot. As De Deb mentioned at the start that you can collect science over two years. Um, one of the nice things about the site is it um, makes you lock in that grade to prevent you from doing something that you shouldn't be doing for the student. The one thing that causes uh, a little bit of grief about is if you have a grade four student that you want, want to collect science for when they're in grade five next year, um, you'll notice I've got this little demo grade four. If I go to the portfolio, add a strand, hey, where's my science? There's no science because it's not appropriate for a grade four student. Um, so the, the little bit of hack you have to do if you're ahead of the game and collecting one year prior is you just got to put that student in um, twice. You keep your grade four for your math and ELA and then put them in again at in this case would be grade five and just do the science and um, collect it as if they were a grade five in order to get at the science. So it's a, a little bit um, odd that you have to put them in twice, but that's to protect you in most cases from doing a content or strand that you shouldn't for an appropriate grade for a student. So for science, let's go into a grade five student, our friend Roy Kent again. It all starts with the skill survey again, same lock here, will not let you create any strands for science until you complete a skill survey. I've got one going for, for Roy, but it's the same 
idea. You just would add a new skill survey and there's only one for science for next gen. It's just the science skills practices survey. But all you need to do is once you open it up, it's, it's a little bit more on the form than what you've seen in the others. So it's broken down by the practice numbers. So give it a date, and then you're just scrolling from top to top bottom. And as that, as Deb mentioned, it's about finding, one second, I'm just gonna change the uh, spotlight for the interpreters. There we go. So it's about finding the appropriate skill that the student can do. So you, you start generally at the grade level that they're at, and then see what skills they can do. And you're just checking off what's appropriate to help you to narrow down um, what they know and what might be a, a good uh, selection to start creating um, with the entry points in the summary sheets. So you have to go from one scrolly scrolly all the way down, four, five, six, seven, eight. So every single one, one through eight, needs to have at least one box checked off. If all of those skills are too high, down at the bottom lives, my student cannot perform any of the skills in the science practice. Each practice has that selection. So that can be the fail safe. If, if none of them are appropriate, then you always at least have this to check off to have it be a complete skill survey. Because I'll say it again, every single one, one through eight, has to have at least one of these boxes checked. Once you do that, you only have to do it once. So you're doing three different strands in the discipline for this is a grade eight. So we might do earth and space, life and physical, one skill survey for all of them. You don't have to do it three times. So it's a one and done sort of situation. So we've completed our skill survey. We can pop over to our strand list. I've got one here that's somewhat complete. We'll come back to this in just a second, but I'll show you how to create a, a new one from scratch. So as in all the other strands we've done along the way, add a new strand, go to cover sheet. Because it's a grade five, now I have access to science. I can click OK. And let's do a life science. So life science, select. Um, pretty basic from here. There's not a whole lot going on. So you, you just want to follow it from top to bottom. It's dropped in what it knows at this point. Um, first step along the way is selecting that core idea. So let's do from molecules to organisms. Um, Want to make use of these two buttons as you go. Notice I don't have any learning standards. Once I lock in that core idea, use core idea, it'll plop it in and give me the appropriate learning standards for that core idea. So use this standard and boom, there's the standard and I get a new button that shows up new summary sheets. So you kind of have to follow the flow as you go of select the core idea, select the learning standard, and then you can now create summary sheets. I'm going to drop one in, just a generic one, just for now to show you what happens if you decide to change your core idea. Um, you can do it. Um, there's a price to pay about doing it because in this strand, the core idea has to be the same on everything you do. So if I tried to go from molecules to ecosystems and then say, use this core idea, it's, it'll let me do it, but it's giving me a pretty aggressive warning of saying, we can make this change, but it's going to delete all of your summary sheets. So I've got this generic one hanging out down here. Click yes. Now I change and I can do a new learning standard, but notice deleted out those summary sheets. Because that core idea is, it's super important that it's exactly the same. We don't want you mixing and matching within a strand of life science. It has to, if I say ecosystems, everything has to be ecosystems. So it will um, wipe it out to stop you from letting to, to mix and match them. But once you've selected your core idea, do a summary sheet. You get a representation of that grid Deb was showing you on the completed, where you can see um, it's placeholders for now, but it'll show you your practice, evidence, descriptions to actually work on a summary sheet. Click summary sheet, and you start to see what Deb was showing you um, along the way. Um, so you can, just like in the other strands, and if you were in writing today, um, you can um, use that my description as a breadcrumb trail for yourself. But whatever you want it to be, you can just type in there and it'll, it'll give you a, a kind of high level view of, of what this is that you're attaching to. Give it a date. 
And then these look like check marks, check boxes that you can interact with, but they're not. Um, you can't click in here. I'm clicking. I know you can't see me, but you can't select them. Everything keys back to this find entry points, kind of like when we were creating measurable outcomes for all the other strands. Um, same sort of idea here is when you click find entry points, it'll take you to um, a representation of the resource guide of what you've been looking at with Deb um, this afternoon. It'll start you at the grade that your students in, so three to five, um, but you, as in the other strands we looked at um, the other day, you can go higher, you can go up to six and eight, go all the way up to high school if you want, you can go lower. Um, typically the access skills show up at the lowest grade level, which in this case is pre-K to two, um, but they get their very own <laughs> tab in this case because everything's broken out by those practices and there's a bunch of them. Um, so access skills, and here you go for all the practice types for access skills, they get their own. So it's just about finding that skill that's appropriate for the student. Um, take your time, look through them. Um, there's uh, plenty to choose from across all of these grade spans, but same sort of idea. Once you narrow that skill you want, click it. It'll zoom you back to the summary sheet. It checks off entry points because it knows what it was, it knows what page, what grade span, and notice it dropped in the practice number two. So. It, it knew where it grabbed that from, and it'll put the practice number in there for you. So you don't have to do that manually. Just select the skill, and it'll populate that for you. Then it's just filling out the text boxes. So description of the activity is what you saw in the samples you've been looking at today. Self-evaluations, same as all the other strands. The, um, see attached, if you've got a separate one or describe how the student participated in self-evaluation, just a text box for you, you to use. Some dropdowns for accuracy and independence. And then pretty much by default, this is always going to be checked off. So is evidence attached? Yes. If you're only doing three and three need evidence, then this is almost always a yes, that evidence is attached for this summary sheet. And that's that's it. Other than attaching the evidence, that's a complete summary sheet um, in, in its essence. And we can go back, so we can save this, go back to our strand cover sheet, and it'll populate the selection. So we knew it was from practice one. Did I say evidence? Yes, I did. Here's the date. Here's that little breadcrumb I left myself with in my description. Um, I didn't write anything for self-evaluation, so it's saying no. But if you type anything in that box, it'll assume you have self-eval and say yes. Um, so that's one sample, but lather, rinse, repeat. <laughs> that's Do that two more times with three different practices. And that's, uh, that's a complete strand, in this case, life science for um, science and tech eng. I'll go back and hop into this technology engineering for Roy and show you a complete. So and this grid, if nothing else, is really helpful as a quick check-in with yourself to say, do I have at least three different practices? Six, three, seven. Yep. Do I have three pieces of evidence attached? Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Um, and I've got two self-evals here. So I know I'm, I'm looking pretty good on the, on the surface. I've got at least the, the minimum requirements going. Um, and you can generate all of this in, in one shot. Um, again, you can print one page at a time. Every single page that you interact with, you can print individually. But as we looked at with writing earlier this morning, if you were with us and the other day, we have generate multiple. It will give me my strand cover sheet. And then some, um, so strength cover, summary one, summary two, summary three, all in one place. And then the skill survey, normally we would tuck right in here between the strand cover and whatever else follows it. Because you only need one per the entire content area for the student for, for science, I don't have to do it for tech eng and life science and physical science. One covers the entire content area. So it's giving you the option to say, hey, do you want to include it here? You only have to do this once. So if I say, yep, then it will give me all eight practices that I selected on my skill survey. And you can print this out and just tuck it right at the start of your science section. And that covers you for the entire discipline. You don't have to do it three times, just one time on this, the skill survey. 
and that's it. That's, so that's, that's the, the building blocks of how to build out these summary sheets and cover sheets for science. It's, there's not a whole lot to it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, but again, feel free to create a, a testing student um, and um, click away and um, interact with it and, and get your feet wet um, before you start your real stuff. There's, there's no harm in doing some samples and then just deleting them after you're done. Um, but now I'll hand it back to Deb and she'll um, continue on um, and talk about um, some high school legacy science. Okay, thank you, Kevin. And just a quick reminder, Kevin showed you how to cheat the system to do if you're doing a grade four, four, grade five, so you're working on science over two years. Thank you for that, Kevin. Um, but as a quick reminder that in the summer, forms and graphs get wiped clean. So if you are grade four or grade seven and you plan on submitting it the following year, you wanna make sure you print everything out and put it in a safe place for the following year because it won't be there when you go back, okay? We also included for you some of these resources. This is from our um, curriculum and instruction folks at the DESI who also, I have to give them credit for helping us create these entry points. And um, they have, they're just a, a wonderful bunch of people that give us some great resources. So check these out when you have time. Um, there's some really cool things in here. I think that you would find them helpful when you're going to do your research, when you're going to do your unit, your science unit. Um, so there's a couple pages, I think, of these. I think there's another page. Yep. So if you download the PowerPoint as a PowerPoint, all of those um, links are live. I, we can't put all those links in the chat for you. So you have to go and get them off of the material site. But please do that NS. TA Daily Do. I, during the pandemic, I was downloading those and they're so interesting and fun and things that kids can do right at home in their own house, um, easy to translate to the school. So just take a look at them. It's, it's really worth your time. And as Kevin said, um, it can be done over two years. I didn't mention that. So if you're in high school, uh, students in grade nine, can start it in grade nine and complete it in grade 10, or they can start it in grade nine and complete it in grade nine and submit it in grade nine. Okay, so the, you have two choices there. All right, so if you don't want to do the next generation biology or introductory physics, maybe you've always done chemistry or tech eng, then this is what we call the legacy. And the legacy format is just what we talked about in the introductory uh, introduction to MCAS Alt on Wednesday. It has, um, you still have to do a skill survey. So you're either gonna do a chemistry skill survey or a tech eng. So you're only choosing one discipline. Science for high school is still only one discipline. So whichever one you choose, you're going to do a skill survey for that one. This is the key. If you think you're doing either of these, please highlight this for yourself. You need to choose three different standards, okay, from one of those disciplines. Three different standards. Each of the standards are going to have one data chart and two pieces of primary evidence that includes the accuracy and independence. It's just like all the information we talked about on Wednesday. If you're not sure, if you didn't go, please go back to the core concepts on creating a data chart. I'm not gonna go through that here, but your data chart has to have eight different dates, has to have a measurable outcome, but you're gonna do that for each standard, okay? So if you pick chemistry, you'll have three different chemistry standards, and each of those standards will include an entry point or access skill with a data chart and two pieces of evidence. And I think I have a picture of what that looks like. Oh, there's, sorry, there's the um, legacy or chemistry, I mean, the legacy chemistry and tech and skill survey, right? And again, you have to fill out each of those until they're all filled in. And then it would look like this. You have a skill survey, strand cover sheet, a data chart. You can include the work sample description. It's very helpful for us, along with the primary evidence and then self-evaluation, okay? 
But as you can see, it's on here. Go back to the core concepts if you want, uh, if you need further instructions. If you didn't, if you weren't able to come to that one, please come to the next one or at least review the PowerPoint and the educator's manual. So you have all the information you need and you don't have, um, you don't miss anything. This sample strand is for the learning standard 1.1. So that would only be one of the three standards that you need for the chemistry. Okay. So we don't have a lot on, we don't have anything on here for access skills. I am hopeful that we will get some samples for access skills. Um, we do have someone available that can answer your questions. Actually, we have a lot of people that can answer questions on your access skills. Um, if you wanna put that in the chat, if you have other questions in the chat, we're just about four minutes out. So I'll see if there's some questions I should read out loud. Okay. Um, So someone is asking how they complete an MCAS all in high school if they were enrolled in physics one year and biology the next year. So you just need to submit one of those disciplines. So I don't know if that's grade nine and grade 10. So I would choose one of those disciplines and then complete your assessment that way. Photographs, uh, any type of consent form for photographs for the MCAS alt we discussed in the introduction, you need to keep a, a, the form on file if you're going to have the student's picture in there. The parents must sign off that you're putting their, pic their student's picture in that portfolio. It's separate and different from the blanket one that they send home from the school district. It's specific to MCAS Alt and you must have it and keep it on file. So the question is, um, if they're doing, you can't do it. You cannot do science over two years if you're doing two different sciences. So you would have to complete the science in high school for that one year. It's only an option. So grade nine is an option. Otherwise, in grade 10, you have to do ELA math and science. So it would be up to your school or your district, if you how you want to work that. It isn't a requirement that you do it over two years. It's just an option. Gives you more time to work on it. I encourage you to use those resources. Um, if your access skills, go in and take a look at those because they cover quite a few concepts under each of the um, practices, under the science practices. So you would most likely end up doing a teacher scribed work sample as the evidence for those science practices. Laura, is there anything that you would like to add for access skills? No, I, I think that if, if anyone is struggling um, after looking at those resources that they can contact you directly and then you can connect them with the person who'd best be able to advise them. Thank you. Well, with one minute to go, I want to say thank you to everyone who showed up this afternoon. I hope that this was clear. And if it wasn't, I hope that you will email me and get it clarified. Thank you again. Have a great afternoon and a wonderful weekend.